All right, so Mr. Jones is receiving from the Department of Defense Accounting System for his VA disability. He's getting about $2,366 uh, each month. Additionally, for his pension, he's getting about $3,493, of which $2,095 are going to be rolling over. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Becker. There's someone here to see you. Uh, bring him in. And we have no changes to be done administratively at this time. Mr. Bassett, I'm going to call you back. How you doing, Jay? Fine. Fine. I, uh, I've been working hard. How you doing? You look good. Feel pretty good. <laughs> Lucille told me to stay up here. You hungry? You want something? Nah, I'm good. You thirsty? I'm straight. Would you be able to tell Clifford to make me one of them fish sandwiches the way I like? For sure. Thank you. And close the door on your way out, would you? Thank you, Maddie. So you're doing all right, huh? I don't know, bro. I've been looking around. I don't know what to think. I'm seeing people going every which way. I'm seeing dogs and cats, airplanes. It's going to take me a minute to get used to things. So what you going to do with the rest of your life now that you done ruined it? Bro, I just came by to say hi. I just want to see how you're doing. But you can't get no job. I mean, who's going to hire you? You got a mark on you a foot wide. They can see you coming. You just took your life and threw it away like it wasn't worth nothing. I don't want all this, bro. I don't want to hear about my life being ruined. I just came by to say hi. I don't pay my debt. You don't even know where your debt begins. I know where it ended. It ended after I did my time. Now, I don't owe nobody nothing. They tried to give me that parole a couple years ago. I turned it down because I didn't want to owe nobody nothing. I didn't want nobody looking after me, asking me questions about my life, telling me what to do. <laughs> I come up in here to say what's up and you start talking about I ruined my life. How am I gonna get a job? I don't want that, bro. I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm, I'm young, I'm healthy. I ain't got no complaints. And I don't hold no grudges. So whatever whatever was between us, I put that aside. I don't hold no grudge. Who the hell care what you hold? I'm the one that's got to walk around here, people pointing at me, talking about me behind my back. Oh, that's him. There he go. That's his brother. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one whose brother killed that girl. That's him. People trying to sneak a look at me out the corner of their eyes, see if they can see something wrong with me. You done marked me and you walk in here talking about you ain't got no grudge. I'm just saying. I ain't got no hard feelings you didn't come to see me, Jay. I've been thinking about my life and everything you did for me, all the things you taught me, everything you gave me, everything Everything you... I gave you, you threw away. You ain't got nothing now. You got less than back when we were kids. I mean, at least then you had some, some dignity, some respect. You just took and you threw it all away. You how old now? You ain't got nothing. Ah, bro, you wrong. I might have lost some things. Yeah. I might have missed some things, but that, that don't mean I ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. All right. Well, since we talking about what we got, what you got, Jim? Well, you the, you the boss now, huh? Yes. I'm the CEO of my company. I'm a deacon down at church. I got a wife. I purchased myself a home. Yeah, it's mine. I got dignity. I got respect. I can walk anywhere and hold my head up high. What I ain't got is a brother. Living a good, honest, decent life. A brother I can be proud of. No, instead, I get a brother who people point to and say, Oh, that's Jim Becker's bro. That's the one that killed that girl. That's Becker's bro. The one they was going to give the electric chair to. That's Becker's bro. I did what I had to do. And I paid for it. What you had to do? What you had to do? What law is there saying you gotta kill somebody if they lie on you? Where does it say that? If somebody tells a lie on you, you have to kill them? You have to kill them. Who taught you that? It was a lie. The girl told a lie. I mean, if it was the truth, then go on ahead and kill yourself. Go on and throw your life away. But it was a lie. We could have fought that lie. I had already lined up a lawyer. Together, we could Bro, you know a lawyer wasn't going to make no difference. 
I wasn't going to the penitentiary for nothing. I wasn't gonna live a lie. You know two wrongs don't make a right. Sometimes they do. Sometimes you gotta add it up that way. Otherwise, it's just one wrong after the next and you never get to what's right. I wasn't gonna hang no sign around my neck that said rapist. So you're gonna hang one that says murderer. That's better? That's honest. That girl lying didn't make you wrong in the world. A lie don't make you wrong in the world. It don't make you right either. Right is right and right don't wrong nobody, Jay. You taught me that. No, 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 no. I respect life. We learned to respect life. We learned all life is precious. Yeah, Jay. We learned a lot of things, but a lot of things I had to learn on my own. Like that time Mr. Rand came to collect the rent when we was two months behind. Yeah, I don't... I don't remember what year it was, I just know it was winter. And Grandma Ada had just died and, you know, Pop fell behind on rent because he had to help pay for a funeral. I don't know if you knew it, Jay, but Pop was always a big man to me. Everywhere we went, people treated Pop like he was a big man. Remember, he used to take us with him to the barber shop. He used to walk up in there and fill up the whole place. People would stop cussing because Jim Becker had just walked in. And I would just look at him and wonder how you could be that big. I wanted to be big just like that. <laughs> Man, you remember I used to go to school. I tried to make myself feel big, but I never could. But I told myself that's all right, because one day when I get grown, I'm going to be big like that. Walk up in the barber shop, have everybody stop and look at me. Remember that day when Mr. Rand came? It was snowing. Pop went out on the porch and Mr. Rand started shouting and cussing and threatening to throw us out on the street where we belong. And I was looking at Pop and I, I, was, I, I was waiting for him to tell him to shut up, get, get off my porch. But instead Pop just looked at him and promised we'd have the money next month. And then mama came to the porch and Mr. Rand kept shouting and, 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 and cussing and I looked at Mama, and she was trying to get us to go inside. Then I looked at you, but you had already ran inside. And then when I looked back at Pop, he wasn't so big no more. He had gotten smaller. The longer Mr. Rand shouted, the smaller Pop got. Next time he went to the barber shop, he wasn't so big no more. He was the same size as everybody else. Just another man in the barber shop. That's when I told myself that if I ever got big, I'm not gonna let nothing make me small. So then when I met Susan McKnight and I found out her daddy was the vice president of Gulf Oil, that made me big. That, that made me feel like I was somebody. Like I could walk up in the barber shop and fill it up the same way Pop did. Then, when that girl told that lie on me, that's when I woke up. That's when I realized I wasn't big on my own. I wasn't, I wasn't big from the inside. When she told that lie, it made me small. And I wanted to do something that said, I'm not just another nigga, that I'm Clarence Becker. And I'm gonna make you remember my name. And I thought about Pop standing there and getting small and, and Mr. Rand shouting and Susan McKnight shouting out that lie on me. And I realized this, this, this is my chance to make the Becker name big. My chance to show what I had learned on my own. I thought you would understand. I thought you'd be proud of me. Proud of you for killing somebody? No, Jay, for being a warrior. For dealing with the world in ways you couldn't. Man, you trying to say I had something to do with you pulling that trigger? What, you trying to say it's all our fault? Pops didn't knock Mr. Ran on his ass so we could keep a roof over your head? So you didn't have to sleep in the cold, in the snow? No, Jay, I did it. What, so you gonna knock Mr. Ran on his ass for us by killing that girl? No, I did it for myself. Things just didn't add up the way I thought it would. Jay, I was wrong. You could have been something. You had every advantage. Pop tried to fix it up so we didn't have to follow up behind them. So we could go on and go further. Pop went without so we could have. Bro. You took your road. You made your choices. 
you done what was right for you. All right? I took my road, I made my choice, and I paid the consequence. Now that's over and done. So let's just say I came by to say hi, and we'll leave it at that. You want to know why I never came to see you? No. I don't want to know. That's your business. I kept seeing your face at mom's funeral. How you just stood there and never shed a tear. You just stood there with this scowl on your face. And now you want to come up in here and ridicule me because cause, cause Pop didn't knock Mr. Rand on his ass? You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because he had Joe black ass crying to be fed. Crying to have a roof over your head, lunch money in your pocket. That's why. Because Pop had family. He had responsibility. If he had knocked Mr. Rand on his ass, you would have went hungry. You wouldn't have had no clothes to wear to school, no lunch money in your pocket. Pop took that ass whooping so his sons could stride through this shit like Daniel in the lion's den. The whole time coming home late talking about, watch out for the Becker name, it's, it's gonna mean something one day. Shit, I did what I had to do, I, 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 I swallowed my pride. The whole time thinking, you bastards got it coming, you're not gonna fuck us over. I did what I had to do and what it get me. What did it get me? Tell me what I got, huh? What I got? All that work I put in, what did it get me? Big bro. Stay away from me. What I get, huh? A murderer. That's what my name gets linked to. A murderer. And the way mama loved you, you killed her. You know that? You a double murderer. I ain't kill mama, Jay, you know that. What you call it then? That woman took sick the day the judge sentenced you. She ain't never ate another thing, said another word. She just laid up in that bed for 23 days until she died. You tell me that ain't killing her. Tell me that ain't killing her. Every day, Mama came to that courtroom by herself. Where was you? Anybody could see how it was wearing her down. Where was you when she needed a shoulder to cry on, someone to hold her hand, someone to care for? Not for me, but for her. When she fainted in that courtroom, I tried to get to her, but I had six deputies holding me back. What was holding you? What was you them 23 days mama was dying? I, I, I was trying to keep her alive. I, I was trying to get her to eat something, man. I was trying to get it her to- It wasn't about eating, Jay. A bowl of soup. She needed to know that she would be there for her. That she could count on you to be there when she got up. But you turned your back. Clinging to your rules. Don't you say nothing to me about turning my back. What you call it then? I was there. I was holding her hand when she died. Where was you? Locked up in a cage like some animal. That's what killed her, to hear the judge say that the life she bought into this world is unfit to live, that you'll be remanded to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections at Western State Penitentiary. There to be executed on the electric chair. This, this order to be carried out 30 days from today. Ain't that what the judge said? Ain't that what she heard? This, this order to be carried out 30 days from today. Shit, that's what killed her. She didn't want to live them 30 days. She didn't want to be alive to hear on the 11 o'clock news that they had killed you. So don't you come up in here saying nothing to me about turning my back. When I nursed that woman, I talked to her. I held her hand. Yo, I, I prayed over her and the last words to come out of her mouth was your name. I was there. So where were you, Mr. Murderer? Mr. Unfit to live among society? Where were you when your mama was dying and calling your name?
you're my brother. I came up with you. But from this moment forward, I'm calling the deal off. You ain't nothing to me. Boy, you just another nigga on the street. <laughs>